remember marketing for startups is not about everything is done is just advertising and selling no 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 marketing is starts with marketing and ends with marketing because it starts with the market if you don't have a good grip of the market you don't have a startup as simple as that okay so discover the needs define the value deliver the value remember you have to experiment unlike engineering where you get a lot of the answers in the textbooks in a startup there are no answers in the textbooks you can only have a methodology a way to approach okay because it, you have to find your customers you, and the way is experiment 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 okay and that's why you have to now this is a life cycle it starts with market insights it starts with market problem it starts with then a solution remember don't start with a solution I think there is one team that I met here just today. You know, we were getting to names. So what? What my feedback and my impression was: he had done customer discovery. That team did a lot of product development. Then came back, did some more customer discovery, a lot of product development. So the, the product development was going way ahead of, and that, that's the risk that all of you run as engineers, because you are very tuned to engineering. Let's build the product. I have this idea. Dangerous. So. Solution design is step ten. It comes much below. In fact, you can outsource solution designing. If you have to do one thing well as a founder or a co-founder, is you can outsource the engineering. If you want to do it, that's great. Bill Gates did his own coding and 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 so on and so forth. So Facebook, I mean, you know, Mark Zuckerberg did his own um, this thing. But you could also outsource your development. But if one thing that you have to do must do is you have to have a good feel of who the customer is, what is his need, what is his problem. what is a customer persona okay and then get to solution design so from a course perspective we are here okay so we are somewhere here okay so today we are going to talk about one thing which is very important which is pricing how do you price your startup okay and you have to again you know i'm not going to i'll give you some lot of examples and some tools and techniques but you know um we'll see later on that all the pieces follow in a natural sequence and pricing is not driven by your cost the biggest mistake you can say is my price is equal to cost plus no no sorry you can do that but that's not a very smart way it goes back to your customer discovery so it all starts with customer discovery and if you price it right you'll be very profitable and make lots of money and if you price it wrong <laughs> you will have a lot of challenges okay um high engagement so our final presentations are on 18th it's a very short intense course okay um 18th remember i will give myself a plus because i'll also self evaluate and you guys will evaluate but for me the evaluation is if you guys have got a live customer any of you that's a plus for whichever team has got it and i will rate myself a plus ki mera ek team ek student ne customer la ke laya during the course then i will salute myself that's a plus a is if you have done a good job of customer discovery so you have a lot of customer you know you can, you can demonstrate lot of customer recordings videos and so on that's a b plus is not so good on customer discovery but follow the process and so on so forth but please don't come to me with a solution without customer discovery and ideally a plus is if you have got a customer and there's no reason why in 90 days time or, or you know whatever 8 weeks time that we have done the class you should not have got at least one customer but like you don't get the money but at least you have signed up for something you know and that i would be i'll be very proud if you guys get one customer one sign up for your idea okay again as i said um i'm not too fast on remember in startups don't get too fast on you know formats and templates and this thing it's okay if you handwrite templates okay you don't have to i'm not to fast on powerpoints and, and 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 this thing i'm more for focus on the business i'm more focus on have you spent time with the customer i'm so you know there will be this logical sequence of assignments which have been heading out and today you'll get the one on pricing if you do if you follow this and don't worry about the formatting and perfect you know um, templating and everything but if you follow this logic you will probably come up with a good business plan by the end of the class because it's a logical sequence it starts with self discovery and team building then it goes on to customer problem customer persona then you get into customer value after that you do the solution design then you get into customer branding and positioning and then you get into customer validation 
and the Facebook uh, marketing that I showed you earlier, for some of you who came late, you can talk to me outside or talk to the people who came early. The Facebook is a great tool for customer validation. And I remember what I talked last time. Okay. So remember, I'm just go running you very quickly through. This is a self-discovery worksheet number one, self-discovery. Okay. Please do this. It will give you whether you want to be, whether your career path is in entrepreneurship or you want to just go back and do a job. Do the self-discovery. And don't do it for this class. Do it for the rest of your lives. It's a very important exercise that at all time you're doing self-discovery. Very important. Go into teams. Okay. Even when you found teams. Okay. Um, this is the third one. Identifying a customer problem. If you have an unmet need, identifying unmet need. Remember, the answer, guys, will not be in smartphones and laptops. If you want to do entrepreneurship, spend a lot of time with people. There are no book answers. So if you, you know, they will not, you will not find the answers in a book. So Google searching, smartphone, laptoping. You can spend hours and not have a good startup. You have to go out and talk because I see a lot of people just always on the smartphone and always on the laptop and gathering knowledge and knowledge and knowledge. Works but doesn't always work. Okay, so go to the real world. Okay, problem identification. If you have identified a problem which nobody else has solved before, that's the first stop to a billion dollar. And you will not find the answers in Google search and you will not find the answer in your smartphone however much time you spend on it or your laptop. You will have to go out and see real problems in the real world. Okay. Then I talked to the customer persona because whole world can be there but I gave the example of the young, rich um, iOS use, uh, iPhone user. If you create that persona, it is very easy to spot that customer anywhere if you are just walking around the street because you are just looking for a young woman upwardly mobile having a smartphone very easy to visualize so you have to create a customer persona so that you can just close your eyes and visualize that customer okay we talked about customer value okay we talked about customer needs for b2c and for customer uh, for b2b we talked about um, sales you know increase sales reduce cost and so on and so forth so customer value proposition after all of these you come with design thinking and you know we did the blind exercise and the deaf exercise where you have to empathize so he is now thinking of his he's doing the fisherman you know drone sensing of fishing this thing actually before the class we are talking about he wants to go on a trip with the fisherman okay and probably maybe put some sensors on a balloon so as for 15 days he wants to become a fisherman and then as he fishes and the balloon is taking pictures okay he can actually see the remote sensing how where the fish is and where the fish is not and the life you know what the customer problems of a of a fisherman that you never get in a textbook this you'll never get in google search this will never get in smartphone because you know a lot of young people get addicted to smartphones so this almost psychologically impossible because all this you know it's almost a brain addiction so throw away the smartphone if you want to do entrepreneurship and go out fishing and 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 there are a couple of gentlemen and you know and i'll be very happy to go with you on field trips during the class or after the class even if the course is over and you guys are and want some help on field trips i will i'm going with one team tomorrow for a field trip okay i can't go on a fishing trip but definitely i'm going on a field trip tomorrow Yeah, okay, no problem, we'll see. Okay, then so then you get into product design and you do rapid prototyping and you talked about 3D printing and so on. So you know again every cycle is day's cycle. Don't get into you know, and I so I talked about Imaginarium and Nasi cluster and all where all the machines are there. And very quickly go there in the morning, create your 3D prototype, come back in the evening, take it to the customer. Okay. Then you talk about the customer continuum. You don't sell agarbatis here. Agarbatis is doke paas, doke paas, doke paas. That's that's list selling. Try to own the need. Apple. Try to own the set the standard. Microsoft. Try to do consultative selling. 
HP, IBM, DHL, you know. And this is how you create the brand. And remember, I showed you the ta time my task. We make ha homes happier. We make homes better, cleaner. Not that we provide maids for cleaning your house. So look at the superior need that you're facing, okay? We talked about the branding worksheet. Then we last time we talked about the validation. Okay, and I showed you the, 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 the Facebook validation as one thing, but please meet that you have to do what he is proposing. Go out fishing for 15 days. Maybe Aparna can also join <laughs> when he goes out fishing. <laughs> you are not working with you know, electricity or chemicals or physical movement. Your laboratory is the human society. Okay, and we are testing it with people. And if it does not work, pivot. So there is one person who met me in the, before the class. He has pivoted three times. And I respect him for that. This is getting, he's doing the customer discovery and he's pivoting. And okay, you change. That's okay versus wasting time. Now we get into customer pricing. Okay, now this is where, remember, first of all, I think you have to start with one basic premise that if you don't make money, no business will survive. This is not, startups is a business except you're just setting up the business. So there is nothing about, ultimately it is about money, if, unless you're doing social startup, in which case you can have a social KPI, a key measure. The dot-com bust happened because people were not focused on money. They're focused on how many eyeballs do I get, how many do you do it is. Sorry, if you don't have money, if you don't have business, now, it is a challenge for many entrepreneurs because I know that many young people, how many of you have actually, forget about running a business, how many of you have actually done grocery shopping every day for your homes? It is a rhetorical question, okay, you do not have to answer it. But how many of you have actually experienced, how many of you have made money so till date? Not as a salary, but made money, not as a salary. So you guys have made money, not as internship and salaries, in business. Now, it is very difficult to make money, especially in, 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 okay. So you have to understand certain fundamental principles of how to make money and how to price it, okay. But before I, I want to show you guys to, uh, to see a video by a guy, a gentleman called Steve Blank who is actually a guru of startup and he consults a lot of this, he is from Stanford and he consults the Silicon Valley guys. So in the reading and the videos that has been handed out to all, to all of you, this is all there, okay, but I am going to play you one video. Read all the reading material that I have given, I have not given any books, I am giving a practical makes that first time and even experienced entrepreneurs make in thinking about revenue and pricing. And the first one is that this whole idea about revenue stream, Steve, I get it. You know, revenue stream, it's about the price, the dollar amount I'm charging customers. That's a mistake. And you'll see later that pricing is a tactic. And, or maybe I kind of get it, okay, now I understand that pricing is a tactic, but I'll set the price of a product based on how much it costs me to make it. Well, how else would you set pricing? Cost me 99 cents to make it? I'll charge a dollar twenty-five, and you know, that's a kind of a reasonable price. We'll also see why that might be a huge mistake in leaving lots of money on the table. And then kind of the third common error is my price has to be less than my competitor's price. If they're charging $5,000, the best way to enter a market is to charge $4,000. Well, no one would pay any more than the existing incumbents, and we're going to see that's another going out of business strategy. And all this depends on your knowledge that you've just learned about the customers, their reaction to the value proposition, and all the work you've been doing outside the building. You're going to have an incredible advantage in thinking about revenue and pricing. All right. So, price, okay, customer pricing starts with the value equation and everything that you're doing in discovering the customer. Okay. So, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. The, the, the worst way to do it is it cost me 5 rupees and I'll charge it 6 rupees. You heard Steve Blank say that, okay? So what does it depend on? So let's look at certain fundamental drivers of what is good pricing, okay? First of all is the customer purchasing power, okay? 
Now, customer purchasing power is a key driver of customer expectation, behavior, and therefore the pricing that you can command. Now, many of you are very US centric because I keep hearing about you know Silicon Valley and US and, and so on and so forth. Okay. Keep in mind that there are fundamental differences between a uh, developing market like China, uh, I mean China is middle, almost developed, India or, or Sri Lanka. So what I'm trying to uh, versus the United States or something. So this is what is called the nominal per capita income that a person in US earns or in different countries on. This is available in the website. It's, it's published every year. So if you're the, you know, per capita income for a country like Switzerland is about $80,000. A per capita for a person in United States is $55,000. $55,000 means it includes the rich people and the poor people. It includes the Mark Zuckerberg as well as the poor, whoever, the, you know, the homeless in US. For China, it is $8,000. For Thailand, it's $5,000. For Sri Lanka, it's $3,000. And India, it is 1,600. Per day, it comes to 4.4 dollars. This is it. Now, if you look at the 4.4 dollars, okay, please understand how it. Not everybody in India makes 4.4 dollars per day. 4.4 dollars per day is about 300 rupees a day. There are some people which will include the rich people like Mr. Ambani and Mr. Sangvi and, and all of these people, all, all of this, you know, the rich entrepreneurs and promoters and CEOs who earn more than $17, but there are only two and a half crores of them, 25 million. But there are about 40, four, uh, 41 crore people who are making less than $2 a day. Please try to understand this because if you're engineers, this is probably one of the first times when you're getting to understand what money is all about. But if you do not understand the monetary aspects of the business, you will fall short. You will not be able to win in entrepreneurship with only engineering. You have to understand the economic aspects. Okay, And many customers and many companies fail in India and China and Sri Lanka and, and many other parts because they don't understand the economics. So try to grasp Okay, a little bit of economics. I have seen presentation where people have come. In, the other day, I sat with some of your presentations, and all of you talked about a lot about the product itself and customer. Dis but I did not hear any of you talk about the economics of it. But if you, unless you understand economics, you will not be able to make it. You will not be able to do business. So first step is that please understand that if you want to operate in India, it's a very different ball game than if you want to work in US. Okay, so do not blindly copy whatever there is, and I'll show you some examples. Now, let's look at certain global benchmarks, how companies adjust their pricing, big companies, and then we'll come to startups. Okay, so if you look at something called McDonald's Burger, which operates in a large number of countries, okay, and McDonald's Burger doesn't cost the same in every country. So this is called the Big Mac Index which is published by the economists. Okay. If you look at the most, you know, a Big Mac in, in Switzerland will cost about 6 um, euros. Euros about, let's say, 80 rupees, I think. That's 480, 500 rupees. Versus in India, which costs, whatever it is, 120, 130 rupees. Not the small one, huh? the proper, uh, the, the, the two patty one, I think. Okay. So, so United States will call about five dollars. That's for three hundred fifty. So that's how big McDonald's charges. Okay, and you guys have to be sensitive because whatever you make, so far you've been thinking, you know, how do I make the product? How do I make the product? How do I make the product? But why did how do you make money with that product? Okay. If you look at Pepsi, please understand that a, a, a Pepsi can in India will cost about twenty five bucks. 20 to 25 bucks, but a Pepsi can in 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 in, um, in US will cost you about 55 to 60 bucks rupees. When I say bucks, I mean rupees. That's how Pepsi prices it. Okay. Conversely, if you look at cars, 
Okay, cars are much more expensive in India because of our government duty structures. So a car in um, in India, okay, is more expensive than a car. In so if you look at a car, a, 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 a Corolla price in US, it's seventeen thousand dollars. In India, it's twenty thousand dollars because of the duties. Because in this twenty thousand dollars, okay, depending on the structure, the government is probably taking away about thirty thirty five percent. And therefore, it becomes more expensive. Okay, so please understand whichever category you are starting with. You have to understand the cost structures of that. I'll give you an example. Okay, now let's say you're working on an auto component. Okay, forget that. Let's say you're making cans for Pepsi. Same can, same aluminium, same design, same everything. If you price, let's say this is the Pepsi Cola can price. Okay. If you price your can at let's say thirty cents, thirty-one cents, the U.S. guys, Pepsi U.S. may buy a thirty-one cent can because they're selling the end product at ninety-three cents. Do you think Egypt guys will buy a thirty cent can? And this is the mistake many MNCs have made, and made. this is the mistake many startups make. They blindly copy something from U.S. and price it at U.S. level. Without understanding that there are local market differences, you're doing you're doing B two B B two B. Most of you in B two C. What are you doing on the gentleman who's we are together? What's your idea? Plan uh, short weekend trips. Huh? Plan short weekend trips. Weekend trips. Okay. So so are you into caravan tourism? Are you not you are not thinking about caravan tourism? Okay, so if you are, if you are, if you are, if you are, let's say, if you are doing the same thing in Australia, in in in, let's say, Switzerland, Alps, you, your partner, no? Let's say you are planning a five-day Alps trip for Swiss people versus a five-day Himalaya trip for Indian people. What will be your pr uh, pricing strategy? Will it be the same? Same price? Based because of, so it's the same same product. You are climbing the Himalayas, and he's they are climbing the Alps, but you have to price it differently. So keep that at the back of your mind. Okay, now let's go to B two B. What drives the B two B pricing? Is macroeconomics like the cost of capital and cost of labor? What is high in India versus US? Cost of labor or cost of capital? So, if you look at capital, okay, zero uh, Fed in, in US interest rates are 0.75 percent. Fed India is 6.25, and if you actually have to borrow your money, you probably have to pay 12 to 20 percent. Whereas in the developed market, Japan and UK, money is almost free. So, which is more expensive? Capital, Capital is more expensive in India. And what is more expensive? Uh, what, uh, what about labor? Okay. Let's let's look at how cheap it is. A driver will probably make twenty-five to thirty thousand INR per month in the India supply chain, depending on which routes and so on and so forth. No problem in fund, no gratuity, no barrier, nothing. Drivers will in in US will make a medium of forty thousand US dollars, and for Walmart etc. they'll make up to seventy five thousand US dollars, which is more than ITNs will make. Most of you will make when you get into a job, because the per capita itself is so high. Now, how many of you are working on automation? There is one thing which is working on. Uh, you are working on automation. Okay. Now, when you are doing robot robots, or you are doing auto machine, wait. So, if you are doing robots, what what do you need more? You need more capital, or you need more labor? Capital, because you are eliminating the labor and you are introducing capital intensive robots or automated lines or whatever, and vice versa. So, where do you think it will sell more? That is the challenge which we face. Driverless cars, Elon Musk. 
very very hot topic very hot topic now if the driver costs are like this okay now by the way if you look at the truck cost because the capital cost there is the truck and now india still has attached trucks you know one body truck in chashi but in us they have got a trailer truck you know they have got trailer contents so you, you can't but you know a same truck to same truck more or less will be the same price in india and us more or less about 30000 you know uh, you can get a, a, a 16 ton truck or 30 ton truck from ashok leland around 25 lakhs will will be one crore okay 25 lakhs will get from ashok leland okay so let's say in us the cost of driver is this versus cost of capital which is the truck itself whereas in india you can put two drivers in a same car and run it for you know continuously why do you think driverless cars will work better forget about the technical aspects of pattern recognition and everything because you've got very heavy traffic people are running around all the time there is no pattern recognition or cognitive computer that works <laughs> because people are just running around what do you sense <laughs> okay there is no rules to sense there is you know you don't know what to sense to so forget the technical engineering aspects where do you think economically it will sell so whenever you are talking about b2b engineering solutions now whether which wherever you are replacing labor with equipment which means capital make sure that you keep this in mind and if you don't keep this in mind you'll waste a lot of time in your life because you'll have an over designed product or doesn't fit the so b2c remember what i showed you and b2b remember what i showed you okay so now we come to customer pricing okay what is customer pricing basically if you look on the left side these are all the customer value that you are creating some of it is coming from the product some of it is coming from the service some of it is coming from the brand and then the price is what he is giving you and in between what you have got is the customer value the difference now if you have so now what happens is if this is actually not this big is actually only this much because not done customer discovery your customers discovery is all google based or smartphone based or laptop based but you have not gone and talked to anybody so you have not really understood what the customer values are if your customer value is here where do you think you'll be able to price it what's your product what what is your team yours no yours second batch yes what's your idea biometric payments, payments. have you worked on the economics of it Uh, have you talked the economic or just the engineering concept uh, uh, talk to them about money like uh, how you will be paying the uh, like me the surgeon for uh, how will be make money but have you tried to quantify is it worth 1 dollar 2 dollar 100 rupees 1000 rupees not yet ha huh? so have you got an idea of the how much the others are creating value have you got some sense have, oh, the bigger question is when you talk to customer are you focusing on the, only on the product and the engineering side or also talking about what are the benefits uh, we are just selling them the okay selling okay fair enough what is your this thing you are doing the gps tracker no sir so have you done the discovery around what kind of benefits can you quantify in economic terms what kind of benefits they will be getting because unless you do this you will not be able to do this because what will do is my gps cost me uh, 500 rupees i'll price it at 700 rupees let me ask you a question let's say your cost of gps is 2000 rupees and you say okay i will i will uh, price it at 3000 rupees so i make some money that's one way but what happens let's see if you done a lot of discovery value or a lot of discovery and you say by using my gps the customers can save 10000 rupees so the customer saves 10000 rupees 
okay, which is somewhere here, here 10,000, this is 10,000. My GPS cost me 2000 and I priced it at 3000. Is it a good decision or a bad decision? What's, what's your opinion? What, huh, no, I know, I know. Last bench, yeah. Bad decision, no. So my GPS is here, 2000. I'm charging 3000. But I can save the customer 10,000. What will you price it at? What's a good price then? Definitely not 3,000, right? <laughs> You're not being very smart if you price it at 3,000. But what do most startups do? My cost is 2,000, but I've not done the customer discovery. So I'll price it at 3,000. 50% margin to RI, na? What happens? If your GPS is 2000, I'm just taking GPS as an example. GPS is 2000, the price to you at 3000, but the real customer value is 1000. Will the product sell? So, you know, ultimately it all goes back to the customer discovery. And most people do, so, you know, when I've been sales managers and so on, I've got hundreds of salespeople, you know room like this, hundreds of sales people, you know, and then because I'm traditional, you know, I've got sales manager and this and that and all kind of stuff, you know, and a lot of people say, boss, price is too much. So for me, there is no bad price. There's only bad customer discovery. And this is where you have to have in your team someone who is financially savvy or you get your savviness yourself and you have to have a sense of business. Others are either you'll overcharge your customer and not have a business or you'll undercharge your customer and not have a business. If you overcharge a customer, you'll not have a business because there will be no customers. Nobody will buy at that price. And if you undercharge a customer, you'll not have a business because you're making losses. So the, the starting point for pricing is not pricing. It's not cost. It starts with customer value. And where do you want to, how do you want to go to market? How do you want to engage with the market? You want to do Agarbati selling, Doke Paas, Doke Paas, Doke Paas. You want to do Link Road selling, Doso, 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 Doso. You want to do pamphlet selling, newspaper has a pamphlet dal diya. 50% discount, 1 plus 1 free. Or you want to do, someone asked me in the class, I think you, I don't know, I forget who asked me. He, how does Xiaomi make money? Or that 1 plus, you asked me the question. Okay, so let me give you some data. If you look at the total profits, not sales, of the smartphone industry, few years back, 50% was Apple of the profits, not the sales. 50% was Samsung. If you go a few years back, 70% was Nokia. In 2015, 92% of the profits was Apple. Samsung was another 20%. So it added up to, I think, 112% because many of the others were losing money. So another version of Doke Paach, Doke Paach, Doke Paach is Snapdragon, you know, 821, 16 MP camera, this 4 GB, you know, 16,000 rupees. 5.5 inch AMOLED LED screen, whatever it is. Snapdragon, 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 you know, Pandra Haza, Pandra Haza, Pandra Haza. Pandra Haza. Are you making money? You're not, no? So it goes back to this and it goes back to this. So marketing, product and pricing is step 9 and 10. Step 1 to 8 is all about shutting up your laptop, locking it up, shutting up your smartphone, locking it up, forgetting Google search, going, going out and talking to customers, going on a fisherman trip. Now, when you start up, you can still do and then I'll, I'll come back to you on, on some of these, you know, locusts. Now, if you have a not so good quality product, so if you do a plot it on two options, okay, price, low high and quality low high, which means features and everything, okay. If you have got high quality and you're pricing it low, that is called penetration. So you may want to enter the market and you price it low. 
Okay, that's called penetration pricing. If you have got low quality and you have got low price, it's commodity, just economic pricing. Okay. If you have got high quality and high pricing, it is called premium pricing. And if you have got low quality but high pricing, it is just making a quick buck and getting out of the market. It's not very advisable for long term. So where do you think Uber and Ola is? Just so that you understand. Last, Uber is. Uber and Ola, what kind of pricing do you think they are doing? Are they giving a high quality service? High quality service and low pricing. Correct. So where, what, where is it? Penetration. Penetration, correct. Okay. Where do you think Apple is? Premium. Premium. Correct? Amazon. Where do you think Amazon is? Where do you think Micromax is? Correct. You understanding the patterns? Now, look. Uh, skimming is low quality. This is fly by night. You know, low quality, low price, mal bech ke nikal jane ka. Don't worry about next time. Typically, Lincoln Road kind of this. I have no disrespect to Lincoln Road. What happens in a floating population, a tourist population, I sell them some kola puris. After seven days, the bloody soul opens up. Low price, low quality tourism. One time sale. Not a good model. So, understanding, understood? Okay. Now, what happens then is you have to then sometimes choose between your features and your pricing. So, should I give three features at X price or should I give five features at Y price or should I give one feature at, y, at Z price? So, plasma TV 36 inch Sony 500 LCD, 40, you know, you can see that this thing. Then we do a little bit of customer discovery to find out where you are maximizing revenues and profits. And there is a science to it, your engineers, this will do very well, I am quite sure. It's called conjoint analysis, which basically means that you ask a lot of people, which one will you buy, which combination will you buy, and then you come up with a statistical analysis of where do you, what does the curve look like. So sales, you plot sales, which is number of units, you plot revenue, which is units into pricing, and you plot um, profitability, which is units into margins, and you come up, depending on what you want to do, you can come up with which is the right combination. But for God's sake, what you don't do is offer five features at the price of one or two or three. And remember that value is, don't try to capture value um, only in quantitative terms. Look at it in emotional terms. Like I said, e-commerce, look, e-commerce will play itself out in the next few years time. Okay, the big challenge for all of the e-commerce sites is making money. Okay. Now they are doing a lot of, I think Snapdeal has just started cutting sales, sales commission and discounts and so on and so forth. Okay. Now what happens is, I think the e-commerce challenge is, if you go to a mall, like I have said in the past few classes, okay, if you go to the mall, you get certain value equation. So if you look at this benefits here, no, you get product benefit, you get good quality product or whatever product it is there. You get good service because it's a destination. You get a food court, you get a cinema hall, you get AC, you can go and spend, hang, hang, hang out time there and so on. You know, you can hang out there. Okay. And you get some brand benefits because, you know, reliable brand is not a linking road or, or, you know, free market. It's a good brand. So you get all of these benefits. And then they give a little bit of discount, whatever it is. They do sales and they do discounts. In e commerce, okay, now, any of the sites may have 10 crore or 20 crore of products. Let's look at the brands. Okay. But you have they have to ensure that those 10 crore, 20 crore products are actually genuine products. Because I have some very bad experience of fake perfumes and you know bad product. So is it branding benefit is there in e-commerce? Because in, you are not always sure that you're getting the genuine product. Service benefits in e-commerce. There is no destination, you can't hang out, there is no food court, there is nothing. Okay. And then product benefits. Okay, yeah, I mean there are product benefits because there is a full range. So if you are to plot e-commerce versus malls, this part will look very different. Then the question becomes how do you price it? 
So if you are, if, the, if you are an e-commerce site, you are actually increasing product benefits because you are giving more choice, but questionable brand benefits because you are not sure how many of them are fakes. And then installation, if you buy some electronics, sometimes you do not get installation and so on. <coughs> and then service benefits and food court, there is no cinema hall, there is no hangout. But they are giving a lot of pricing benefits. So I think it will be very interesting to see how those e-commerce guys actually make money. And then also one thing that blindly if you copy the, the American model, America in the 70s and 80s went into what is called modern trade, okay, which is the big box model. So they created the big boxes and, and called Walmart or Macy's, you know, there was Macy's and there's Sears, Rubak and there's Walmart and Costco and Target. They came back and they put up. But please understand the American, most of them do not see going to the mall as a value added activity or an entertainment activity or a destination activity. Their entertainment is on going abroad, by going, going outside, fishing, hunting, you know, whatever it is. And for them, chore is going to the mall and buying some stuff, number one. Number two, they have got big pickup trucks. So they can go and buy full week or full month's groceries and come back in one day, load it up in the pickup trucks and come back. Number three, okay, they are not in weekly wages. The purchasing power is higher. Number four, land is cheap. Now you come to India. Land is expensive. Many people are on daily wages or you know on, on, on household budgets. Okay. Going to the mall is almost a destination because you are in you are doing many things other than shopping. If you go to Kirana store, you get home delivery, sometimes you get credit. And therefore, modern trade has not really taken over, um, though they have got supply chain efficiency, they give a lot of discounts. So you have to do, understand the customer economics and the customer behavior. And, and Indians don't have cars. So you can't buy a full weeks of stuff and put it in an auto on a taxi. Okay, because we want to buy small amounts from a nearby Kirana store. So you have to understand the economics and the behavior. And if you understand that, and if you can create this, and then you can price it. Okay. Because personally, I just hate losing money in business. <laughs> I've had many discussions with my teams and I have inherited businesses which are loss making. The first thing I did was add value, take up the price. So my strategy has always been 30 years of my life, increase this, increase this, increase this, increase this and then you know that 10,000 value and I can give you a lot of stories when I have time, I don't have time but if any of you want to hear a lot of story, I'll give you practical examples of how you increase this. Because the more you increase this, the more you can increase this. So um, remember, um, you have more flexibility here. Um, 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 in, 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 um, so in PNG, when PNG entered the market, okay, PNG was in in the 80s a very um, wix driven kind of a company. It was a chemist kind of a company. They had not bought in the. It was called a company called Richardson Wix. Then PNG bought globally a company called Richardson Vicks. So when I passed out of IIM Kolkata, there was no actually um, um, PNG in India, there was Richardson Vicks. Then PNG bought Richardson Vicks and then through Richardson Vicks India entered PNG India. The first category that they brought in was a category called Whisper. Whisper is a ladies um, sanitary napkin. That was the first category and the incumbent was a company called Johnson, Johnson and Johnson. Okay, they had stay free and, and PNG brought in Whisper. I was a district manager sales that time. Okay, so first of all it was a superior product and it was priced to premium. Okay, so anybody, so to demonstrate that the product was superior, okay, so we had to demonstrate to the consumer, to the, uh, the, uh, the women that it is a superior product. Okay, and we have to convince trade that it's a superior product, which we did later also with Ariel when we brought in when PNG brought in Ariel and then we went with uh, Hindustan Liver. Okay, now here's what PNG did: they did three or four things extraordinarily well, 
and today they almost dominate the category and get most of the profits I think. No disrespect to JNG or anybody, okay, I am just giving my. First, to demonstrate the product superiority, they created a test. The test was as simple, they took uh, in a test a bullet, okay, a little bit of fluid colored blue with the same property as the menstrual fluid of a woman and they put it into both of the pads, the rival pad and the PNG's pad and after 5 seconds or something you wipe it and see that the PNG pad actually is dry, nothing comes out and the, the other rival pad actually something is still sticking. So product superiority. Now the question is how do you can communicate that to the consumer? How do you increase this? So let's talk about the product. So there is a product benefit. How do you demonstrate that to the women? So PNG started doing a house to house sampling. So they sampled a lot of people, gave away samples free. Now as a startup you can't do that, but you can do freemium which, which, which is a different pricing strategy. Um, you can give some of it free. So PNG did a lot of sampling free, especially to schools because when the first um, you know, my daughter, your sister, your girlfriend, your whatever, your you know, uh, Bobby's anyway. When you first, when the first menstruate and you experience a good product, then you stay with the product forever. So they give you a lot of samples free. Second thing, you have to convince trade. Now the trade is very conservative. Okay. So at that time, we had actually gone to all the chemists. Now please understand that categories like condoms for men and sanitary kind of embarrassment categories okay so can you also kind of stock it separately and when you go there is this embarrassment about buying a condom because we you know kind of you not you know there's a social stigma in india okay so the buying pattern was the the, the condoms and the sanitary napkins were stocked in the back room and the lady or the man would go i'm not going to talk about condoms i'm going to talk about sanitary napkins they would go and they will say point to that and say miracle dinner and they will wrap it in a newspaper or this thing and give it to the woman because there is a so we our sales strategy was we went to trade and first of all to almost 150,000 stores we demonstrated the test, the pad test. Now imagine going to Punjab or Haryana male dominated societies going to a store and I did that for thousands of stores or UP very conservative you know and going to say and taking out two pads and saying this is this pad and this is png pad and this is like menstrual fluid and this is what i'm done pouring it now imagine the embarrassment and the behavior change we had to drive we drove it and then we incentivize the trade to put the displays on whisper so if you go if you notice if there are a lot of displays on whisper which later on the conduct industry also took up so that actually it was an embarrassment category, so it's hidden somewhere. Okay. So put it there so the women could actually make a choice. So then displays came out, awareness came up, and so on. But the pricing premium was almost hundred percent. Same with Ariel. When PNG entered India with Ariel, okay, there was wheel and sunlight and surf. And PNG came in with Ariel. There. That time 80 rupees kilo and surf and sunlight 30 rupees kilo, almost 150 percent premium. Technicals, so we then demonstrated to 12 lakh stores, and I was district manager of Delhi, UP, and all those places. Okay, and UP I, that time I would have had probably one lakh stores, and maybe Delhi we had 30, 40 thousand stores. Store to store, we took um, four small, um, you know, plastic containers. One we put um, PNG product, one we put Nima, uh, wheel and sunlight. Okay, And we took swatches and put a stain. So we took a swatch force, we had the swatches and we put a stain, put a stain in front of the shopkeeper, put then you know, shake it up, put the, this thing in, the dirty cloth in and after some time take out all the four cloth, put it and say, up the here which is cleaner. And that we did for 12 lakh stores. I say we because that time I was working for that. And I remember going and launching this in Amritsar at almost 2 or 3 degrees centigrade. And the day we were supposed to launch in Amritsar, there's a bomb, remember this was 91, huh? there's a lot of insurgency at that time. There's a bomb blast in Jalandhar. And we are not sure whether we can launch. And when we did the test, we realized the water was so cold. The test results were getting screwed. 
So we have to carry. <laughs> so first of all, that day I remember, we had to go around the Golden Temple and everything to say, okay, look, can you launch today or not? And that, and then we had to carry warm water. And every route we had to actually carry from the chai wala the warm water, and so that there is sl slightly, you know, slightly hot water, 12 lakh outlets. And this is what actually is the freemium model. You give something else free, so you taste it. And Silicon, so a lot of the things which Silicon Valley adopted, I'll come to in a minute. Um, Silicon Valley adopted, actually, the good companies had adopted for decades. But it all goes back to winning the customer. And if you can increase this, so, so Ariel was 80 rupees and the Salf and Sunlight 30. Whisper was, I think, launched at, I don't know what, what time, what the pad was, but again, at least 100 to 150 percent premium. When I went back into my last two companies, I priced up, and these are global MNCs. But it's not that I just took this one up. I took this one up very heavily, very heavily. And the, my, in, my, in my previous two jobs, um, my customers were who? Big guys. All the auto companies, all the auto component guys, all the engineering, you name it, any MNC. And getting money out of those guys because I've got trained procurement teams and so on and so forth. So my task to the sales directors and all was, you have to take this up. Don't come and complain to me about this. Show me. So if you want, if you're walking into Coke or Pepsi or, or Ford or General Motors or ABB or Siemens or you know IBM or HP, which all customers are different types. Show me what is the value equation. Show me. If you want this right, this falls into place. If you haven't done this, which means you have not done everything that I've talked about last few classes, okay, and you have not done this, you are doomed to losses, and sooner or later you'll wind up. Sorry, Amit. So they stock it. Remember that if you are up against a very, remember when, when this was launched, the competition was almost 10,000 crores and, and, and PNG was hardly, whatever it was, a couple of hundred crores, or two or three hundred crores. So the competition was doing everything not to stock the, P I mean when I was launching, okay, uh, we, with all respect to all competitors, I went to town because of the DM, so we started in Ghaziabad, then Ghaziabad, Meerat, Aligarh, Muradabad. Bareilly, Lucknow, Kanpur, that was the route, okay. We went to Mirat and we were very small company, we were launching, suddenly, you know, the, big, the bigger competitors come in with a big van and we are doing cycle rickshaws and carrying the product. With six or seven sales people, they went to the entire, oh, Miratka, or civil lines, whatever that main street is there, they, they said, ha ha ha, I'll give you so much, so much, so much, so much, so much, but only country, you can't keep the competitive product. So they were trying to buy out the trade. And when two beverage companies entered, they were actually buying up each other. So, you know, trade wars can be quite nasty. They're, you know, they're breaking up each other's bottles. Because if you break the bottle, you can't sell the product. So, point I'm trying to make is, you have to ultimately show value and win over the channel and win over the customer. Otherwise, they won't stop your product. Normally, uh, um, um, so, trade, there are other nuances which we can talk about. Because if you sell an 80 rupee product versus a 50 rupee product, you make more money. It also benefits. Margin structure is the same. Okay. So here are some pricing models. How do you price it? Okay. Product or service is free. Revenue from ads. Example? Yeah. I mean, Google search is free. Facebook is free. But you make money from it. So who is the, then the product for Google? Who's the uh, who's the product for Google? Our yes. So who's the who's the customer? Uh, who's the customer? Who's the product? The advertiser is the customer, and the product is our profiles. Okay. Freemium model. LinkedIn. Some of it is free. Some of it you have to. And many of the apps you get the basics free. Then you have charge. Subscription model. This Microsoft. Some of the products are Outlook 365. You pay per year. And some are newspapers are subscription, magazines are subscription. Printer cartridge model. You sell the initial equipment free, but make money on the. So give me one more example. One more example other than printer cartridge. Cameras. Cameras. Yeah. Cameras and films. Yeah. Sim cards and subscription. Very good. Sim card is free now. 
you can actually it's lying outside the stores. You get the SIM card fee. Subscription is where the money. Channel pricing. If you go, so what did Flipkart do? If you go to the app, you get special deals. Correct. When they first launched the app, to the channel, if you go there, you get this. You go there, you get this. Plus, now cost-based model. Cost-based model. How many of you want to do cost-based model after my last 20 minutes of lecturing? Please try to avoid it. Okay. Customer value-based model is probably my favorite. Whenever you are selling a service, find out how much value. And cust uh, uh, ITS does this. IT Animal Services does this all the time. SAP, ERP people, and all. You know DHL and so on. They do it all the time. Product line of future pricing. Uh, Airlines, economic class. Business class, first class. Correct. MS Office with or without Outlook. Correct. MS Office student, home, business. Correct. Peer pricing, banks, normal customer, gold customer, platinum customer, credit cards, tiered, uh, I mean tiered, correct. Open book pricing. 3 PLs. Typically, you'll say, you know, whatever is the cost, cost plus 10 percent. Not a very good way to work. Stupid way to work. My cost plus 10 percent. I'll open my books for you. Check on that. You give me 10 percent or a fixed fee. Very bad. Transaction pricing, brokerages. You trade one one oh, hundred rupees. Give me a fee of two rupees. I think the customer value model won't be good when you have competitors. Basically, you might be providing a value of 10,000 per customer. Yeah. But if you have a uh, competitor who is doing it for lesser than your cost. So it goes back. Why are you competing? Why are you competing? If you are doing apples, if he selling apples, he is selling apples, he is selling apples, and you are the fourth person to sell apples. Does it make sense? I was the first person to sell apples and he is getting You should never compete you should disrupt competition is not a good position for a startup competition implies you are the fifth or sixth in line you must disrupt the drive chase disruption don't chase competition customer profitability very easy but people miss, miss very easy conceptually very difficult to implement what happens what what, what happens in this sequence you're profitable unprofitable Many companies lose money. Why do they lose money? Not that they don't understand this, but they don't even know what their costs are. Conversely, so how can you change the balance? How can you reduce costs and improve? So here are some examples. What are some of the costs? Um, let's say what, what's your what's your startup? Third row, third row. Yes, third you, third row. Yes, what? Renting, Renting books. Okay, so what will be some of your costs? Hiring software. People costs, software. right? The software cost, the people cost, and so on. Okay, in automation, what will be your cost? Manu material cost, manufacturing cost. So you have to drive costs down. Now, if you're sourcing, let's say you're making something and you're sourcing company, components from China. Okay. Chinese, you know, if you go to Alibaba or something, if you buy, you have to be very careful of your supplier contracts. Others will be uncompetitive in market. How many of you have actually procured, how many of you have done a supplier contract? Buying long term supplies. Ah, but you have not yet bought. So, so you know, you you should probably have a completely uh, 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 detailed discussion around supply management because that's what drives your cost. Inflation, every year in a country like India, cost will go up because people want salary increase. Pet petrol prices may be going up, electricity prices go up, land prices go up. How do you cover them? So profitable business can become loss making very quickly. So year one you're profitable, but your costs are under control, out of control. And you, if your costs are increasing 5%, you have to go to the customer and say, boss, I need a 5% increase every year. Will customer give it to you? But you also have to eat 7% extra value every year, no? Last year, I 5%. But what are you doing for me? 
better than last year. Doing the same thing and asking you for more price? How do you increase sales? Huh. How do you increase sales? Yeah, you increase the price. How do you increase the price? You go to the customer and say, I'm increasing the price. You think he'll, he'll say okay to you? No, no. What do you do? You say, here's how I'm adding value versus last year. I'm gives you so much incremental benefits. So much more sales, lesser cost, lesser capital. Or you upsell or you cross sell. How do you, how do you lose? How do you lose sales? What happens if you lose customers? Ah, you. Yes. For, uh, last but one bench in green. Sorry, I apologize. I, I still don't remember everybody's name. I apologize. Huh, correct. How do how you lose sales? If you lose customers, you are underpricing. Biggest mistake. You are engineers. I am not sure how to price it. I have underpriced. Save. Let's play safe. Competition is so severe. Baad dekha jayega. Non payments, customers don't pay you. Returns, they take it and return it. Now, one other thing, if you are doing especially startups, this is very important for startups because this uh, uh, is cost to acquire versus long term value. So, what when an e commerce site is getting a customer, okay, the assumption is that the customer will do many transactions, not just one. So, in the first transaction, if you lose money, it's okay because I'll, I'll recover it over time. So this is the customer loss lifetime value. Okay, how much does it? If I have the customer for two or three or four years, how much money will I get over two or three or four years? Not in the first thing. Okay, so it's a relationship, not at one time. If you don't know the lifetime value of a customer, you will not know how much to spend on a customer. Now let me ask one question, all of your engineers, how many of you have got actually a love for finance? How many of you will yawn away and fall asleep or go check your smartphone when you talk finance? Raise your hand honestly. So you don't want to do finance, you don't want to do finance. How do you do a business? Okay, so you'll be the CTO. But should you at least understand finance? Correct, understand, but finance is just a jargon. If you are the tech part, remember, finance is owned by both of these. This you can delegate to the salespeople. Who owns this? So you will keep designing and designing and improving and improving without understanding what is it doing for the customer. Is that a good way? may not be a good way, no? You are blindly just doing the research and R&D and R&D and R&D, but you don't know how much it is worth. Think about it. All right. So, uh, you know, customer lifetime value is like this. I am not getting into too much of detail. Um, so, this is a calculation of lifetime value. So, basically year on year, it calculates how much sales, how much is the cost, how much is the margin and how much is the customer lifetime value. My recommendation is all of you who want to be the CEO of your companies or CMO or CFO, please deep dive into this. I can't cover it in such a details in such a short course. Okay. Even if you want to have a CTO, don't be an expert, but be aware. Don't say I'm an engineer. I only understand the technology part. It doesn't work like that. Okay. Now this, this is about the lifetime value. Okay. There are ways to calculate and remember that what happens in a cost to acquire? What happens when Uber gives you a discount coupon? Or PNG gave the whisper free? What are they doing? They are spending money upfront because they believe that over, because if you use whisper once and you use it for the rest of your life, every month you make a lot of money. So is it okay to give a free little bit of whisper free or not? Is it okay to give Uber ka discount coupon or the discount voucher for the first ride. Is it okay to give a lot of e-commerce discount for the first six months or one year to get 
LTA, yeah, the cost of you know, it, because what happens is you may lose money in the acquisition phase, which is what Uber may be doing, e Ola is doing, OEO is doing, e-commerce is doing, but over time they will make money. That is all discussion. Even if you are a CTO and you are not interested in the finance, you need to understand how to acquire customers. Because who will acquire the customers for you? And in startup, the technology plays a key role in acquiring customer. That's called growth hacking. How does LinkedIn bring in customers or Facebook bring in customers? They do what is called the viral cycle. So every person that gets in brings, brings in one more person because you get a network. Now, if I if you are the first person in, in LinkedIn and you bring in two because you like it and you want them to join and three of you then bring in two each. So it goes one, three, two into two, six, six into two, twelve, it goes like this. And your product design, even if you are a CTO, has to have the virality built into it. And that's how um, and, and Facebook gets customer. That's how Uber gets customer. That's called a network effect. That's called growth hacking. The product does the marketing. And if you believe that LinkedIn or Facebook, any of the, or Uber or any of those, or OA. Networking effect. If you're not aware of it, you will not be a very good CTO. Because, you know, end of the day, apps, you know, you can set up a website in GoDaddy in three hours' time. Do you need IT skills or all of this entrepreneurs lecture for this? You can set up an app in three days' time. People will set it up for 10,000, 20,000. You really need ITNs and this course for that. Digital marketing, you can do digital. I showed you how to do digital marketing. 1400 rupees, you can get digital marketing. For Thane and all, this place is full of people who will do digital marketing and do an app design or a website design. You guys should operate at a higher level, more strategic level. You know? So yeah, I have just put in some stuff, but I don't think I'll have the time. Just read it. They are meant to be cartoons, but there are deep significance in this. This is about this lady who just spent three dollars, and this gentleman is treating with a lot of respect because he knows that the three dollar customer today is worth ten thousand over the lifetime. This is about service. So, when you are doing a technology, let's say you are the CTO, you have got a great product on day one, but computers will catch up and what is very novel today will be very mediocre tomorrow and dead day after. This is like a typical sales scenario and this is the sales part. Absolutely. But this includes everybody in service. So who, is the, who should be your best marketeer? Not you. Your best marketeer should be your customer. So there is something called net promoter score. So we always, good companies always check how well their customers are raising the product and they are bringing other customers. So LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Uber. Okay, because if you, even if you have a sales for how big will your sales for 1000, 2000, 3000, 10,000, biggest sales for is 20,000. But if you do network effect, Facebook uh, in Facebook, 1.3 billion users are all <laughs> bringing in customers. So your customer should be a marketeer, and your product design as a CTO should make sure that you have built that into your. You understand? So in, in the startup. Customer retention and service, I am just going to show you a few things and see if I have time for one. You have to exceed customer expectations. But first of all, you have to go and know what is the customer expectation, no? I have done a website, but I do not know what the customer expects. I have done this wearable, but I do not know what the customer expects. I have done this robot, but I am not sure what, who the customer is and what he expects. I have done this, you know, Facebook mining, Twitter mining, this mining, that mining, but I am not sure what the customer expects. I have not defined it. I have not defined the persona. I have not defined the customer. I have not defined the expectations. 
if I said, if you're doing tech ventures, please look at Apple. And don't look at Apple when they're already big. Go back and look at Steve Jobs, circa 80s, late 80s, early 90s. When you're slightly older than you guys. Read it. The customers don't care whether IIT, Harvard, MIT, they don't care about, who cares? Who cares whether it's Snapdragon or MIT or Mujaffar Institute or Massachusetts Institute, who cares? I mean, who cares who, who's, you know, if I'm thirsty, I want water. Who cares whether it's done by which company? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a good brand and all, I care, of course. And it's pure, I care about purity and all, but I don't care who the promoter is and so on and so forth. Now, this answers your question. Someone asked the question, how do I, you know, how do I make a product in India versus US? So, this goes back to understanding the customer expectation and then working backwards towards the technology. The biggest mistake you can make is start with the technology and hope you can sell it. And please trust me, if, just because there is higher per capita income in the developed world versus um, versus the emerging markets, don't think it's easy to sell there. I can make anything and get away with that. No, if the developed market in, in, income levels are here, the customer expectation levels are also here. So you can't take a you know an emerging market product and sell it there and say, oh, what is the rich customer I have based so if, they if their income levels are here, the current service levels are here and the expectation levels are here. And in emerging markets, the current income level is here, the expectation is here and the current service providing is also here. So you have to work backwards towards the technology. Just hang on, just read this. So what was Steve Jobs? He was the chief technology officer or what? Did he say, okay, look, I focus only on the technology or who was the CEO? Remember, he was talking about thumbs up and thumbs down much before this online like and dislike came in. Intuit, you see, don't, the essence of business and the essence of marketing has been there for thousands of years. I showed that in my first class. The mechanics of it may differ. So, printed press may have changed to, you know, new, uh, TV to movies to internet. Thumbs up, ways of thumbsing up, thumbing up and down may have changed. Icons and emojis and all of the stuff. But the essence of business, good businessmen have been doing business for hundreds of years. Thumbs up, thumbs down is now, later on has become, you know, Facebook may like, dislike. But the essence of it was there. Okay. Now, I'll, let's do a very quick class assignment. But before that, so that, um, so, so one thing is that, remember this is the worksheet where you basically do about three things, what is, which is what you offer, which is features, benefit and the job that you are doing, what you charge, which is what you charge for the product, which is, this, this is actually the wrong sheet, um, I will just, just see what is written on the left side, there is a typo here, just on the left side, price of service, ah, correct, right. price of service, price of product and, and the strategy, so, okay, so this should say strategy, okay, so this is, sorry, my, 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 this thing, okay. So, what to charge? So, I will just change it. Huh? This is what is there in the worksheet that um, she will hand out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this, this one has a, my apologies. So, but there is also a class assignment. If you can spend a few minutes, what you offer, what you charge and how do you compare? Please understand, I will be a big fan of yours if you say I am more expensive than the customer but I offer more value. Customer is at 1000, you should be at 10,000, but you offer 15 times the value. For that, no Google, no smartphone, no laptop. Hidanandani, Bandra, <laughs> Kolapur, Sholapur. Ah, your smartphone addiction doesn't, is not going to help. Kolapur, Sholapur, Nasik, Una, Aurangabad if you, and others, if you want to go to Bastar or something, that is fine. Okay? So, what you offer, what you charge, how do you compare versus competition, other current options. Okay?
HDF says just launch a robot. Okay, he may not. They want to test it in 20 branches. This one is now available at the Kamla Mills branch. So I'm going there tomorrow with a couple of you know students from here. To what does it look like? This is what it looks like. Okay, and there is a company called Asimov Robotics, which is providing this to HDFC. So if it's in a branch, it's next to the counter. You can customers can go and ask different questions like this, such as cash deposit, foreign exchange loans, and over time it will get into voice and face, face recognition. So you don't have you have to introduce yourself. Looking at the face, you know who you are. Okay voice guided navigation balance and query and so on and so forth and this is the company which is providing it it does many kinds of robotics one of them is this if you have to choose the pricing model for asimov for hdfc which one would you choose let's just go around because we don't have time for discussion which one would you choose of so this and say, say uh, give me a percentage of the business which what they for you Okay, fair enough. Okay, not a problem. That's this this thing. Which one did you choose? Your what will be your pricing strategy for SMR robots? Huh? If you are SMR robotics and providing this to HDFC, what? Which of this pricing? How do you price it? It's okay. Then that doesn't matter. How would you price it? Transition price. Huh? Transition price. Transition pricing. What's that? Transaction. Oh, transaction pricing. Okay. So every answer, give me ten rupees. Not bad. Okay. How do you price it, Tatma? You do subscription. So every day, every branch, or number of hours, hours per branch. Okay, fair enough. Okay. How do you guys charge it? Huh? Is there anybody who will sell the robot to them? You sell the robot. Okay, and then that's it. It's one time. Sell and subscribe. Okay, I mean, there's a right or wrong. I'm just making you think. It's important that you understand pricing because most of you are very comfortable with the engineering side. You're probably very comfortable with the AI under this and all of this. I'm saying you don't have to worry about that. That is an outsource even. Worry about how you're going to make money if you're going to be entrepreneurs. If you're going to be a computer science engineer like some of the gentlemen here or a, you know, electrical engineer, communication or remote sensing, worry about the AI, the data mining, voice recognition, all the APIs. If you want to be an entrepreneur, worry about how am I going to price it. How do you guys price it at the back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you price it? Yeah. Subscription? How do you, how do you price it? Feature. Okay, so you know, if you want this kind of robot, so much. If you want so much, okay. So you understand the difference between engineering and entrepreneurship. Okay, so I just wanted to leave you with the thought that if you are looking only technology, you think AI, data mining, voice recognition, speech recognition. You think about all of this. Cameras here. How big should it be? How, which is important. But if you are thinking engineering you have to think this and before that you have to think value um, now we have we have you've got the insights got the problem got the solution we are now getting into business model so we got into the financial side of it the pricing side of it okay and next class we'll start getting into how to market so if you're b2b how do you go and talk to a customer and then how what are the economics of it because many startups fail now, I, because this is a very short course, I will not be able to spend too much time there. I will probably have two or three classes how to go market. Okay? But I will try and give you at least a flavor and at least make you be aware that there is a difference between entrepreneuring and engineering. And you have to make the choice where you want to play. Okay? Make sense? Alright, thank you so much.